At the time of recording, it is still May, so that means one more project for mundane May can be snuck in. And in this video, I wanna make a very mundane drill press table. It's not gonna have all the bells and whistles and go up and down automatically with magic motors and all of that, but it will be a small bit of convenience for me. This is a very nice drill press, the Nova Viking, but the drill press table that comes with it, while it is adequate, it is not great for woodworking, and there are a few things I think it can be improved on for relative ease. Now, by no means do you need a drill press table. A lot of those things can be achieved individually with a piece of plywood or clamping a, a board across for a fence or something like that, but it's just a little bit of nice convenience for me. Now, when you're building a drill press table, it's absolutely imperative that you exactly, precisely size it. Uh, because if you don't, I mean, all your round holes are gonna be wrong. You just can't eyeball it and go for issues, you know, about this big-ish. Likewise, when you're positioning the T-Track, you must get that exactly in the right position. There should be no gray area where it will or won't hold because, I mean, what's even the point then? All jokes aside for precision using a router, both the depth stop and the width of the dado that we're cutting is not to measure twice cut once, but to measure no times and just reference off the material itself. In this case, it's an off cut of the T-Track, which allows me to set it precisely to the T-Track rather than trying to measure and replicate all of those dimensions. Um, it's just quicker and easier than finding out that this piece is 19 point eight three millimeters or something like that. To cut the mortise for the throat plate, I'm just using a half inch bit, the same half inch bit I was using before, and the, I think it's the 30 mil guide bushing that came with my plunge router. If you have a plunge router, you really should be using guide bushings probably more often than you are because they are great utility for getting accurately sized holes without needing a thousand different bits, both in the width and height, because you don't need bearing guided bits, you can use the bushing and templates to make up uh, all of the sizes that you need. Now you might wonder why a square throat plate for the removable insert rather than round. After all, with a round one, you can use a large forcing bit, this is the largest one I have, or a hole saw or something like that, and cut that circle out in no time without having to use a router. And yeah, I absolutely agree. That's a quicker and easier way to do it. The problem is on the insert side. You can make a circle fairly easily using a router or a router table, some sort of jig there. But it's just that little bit more effort for the square inserts, rectangular inserts, whatever size, it's two cuts on the table saw. Maybe three if you need to get that size really accurate. Uh, so I know for me personally, I will actually do it if it's uh, a square, but I won't actually do it if it's a circle. And I see that a lot online too. People will have these chewed up inserts for their drill press table because they made the easier decision during construction that comes back to haunt you a little bit during the actual use for however many years you actually have that table. Now, there is the obvious disadvantage that you only get the four corners so you know you'll go through them a little bit quicker than a circle that you can just rotate 360 degrees but that's fine a lot of the time I don't care about having a 
perfectly clean exit hole. It's just nice to be able to quickly make an insert for when I actually do care, when it's very critical. And with a circle, you just don't have that flexibility. It's just that one extra step or more than one extra step to make a nice clean blank. The particular screws that came with this particular T-Track are just a hair longer than the material or what's left of the material after it's been dadoed out. So I'm adding this piece of melamine underneath it and that will give somewhere for the screws to go but also when I'm mounting the whole thing together I can screw up into the melamine, through the melamine and into the plywood and it'll be a little bit more secure. Squaring up the corners here with the chisel takes just a minute or two and that minute or two means that when I'm making the throat blades I don't have to round the corners there so it's well worth the time I think anyway. So this is going to be the fence. I'm not sure where all these parts came from if I'm being honest. They've been floating around the workshop. Uh, this is a little bracket I had to drill out for the 5 16 inch T-bolts which will get locked down with a matching thumb screw. That'll attach to this fence here, which is a piece of aluminium extrusion, which I presume I got from an X-carve, something like that. Uh, it's one of the parts that I didn't end up needing. So to attach the bracket to the fence, the aluminium extrusion, I've got two insert nuts here. The bracket will go like so, and then that just locks down with some M5 hardware. leave it a little bit loose for now so that I can adjust this then lock it in position for the T-Track so that this is in the correct alignment. I've got this back to front so you can see what's going on. Uh, so this one's already lined up. This one can slide left and right. And slide the bolt in. Doesn't really need to be square, it's a drill press, it's not really square with anything. Round cutter and all of that, just like a router table. Lock these down. Now that fence is not going anywhere, just need to lock the table down. A big washer, a small washer, and then a regular wood screw, and the table is secured to the existing table. If it was something you're gonna be removing frequently, you could use bolts with threaded inserts or a star knob, something like that to clamp it on. But for me, I'm just gonna be leaving it on my drill press because that, that's the whole point. The whole convenience is having that always set up. Now I'm not a frequent metal worker, so this is mostly set up for woodworking, but I have made this little platform for a metal working device, drill vise, uh, and the platform itself slides into the T-Track and then I can tighten this down. The vise itself is secured with four screws. I'd rather than bolts but I just don't have the right size on hand uh, and this is very secure. This is a little bit easier than using the hold downs to hold the metal vise. You can bind that with the fence and it's a really secure thing. It's got no way to rotate because it's got the fence locking it down. It's got the bolts locking it down. So the positioning of the T-Track is purely for where these clamps are going to go to. I don't need them right in the middle of where the drill is because that's where the drill is, but small work pieces will be able to be held down securely. With these, there's no magic signs. I went, they're about this long. I'll make it about that far away from the hole. As I said, you don't need a drill press table. It is a bunch of small conveniences added into one. So if you want to replace it with just a piece of MDF or plywood or whatever, you get most of that as just slightly less convenient. I've also been told that if I don't sign off videos with my usual thanks for watching, it just ends a bit weirdly. But I want to try out a few new catchphrases. So let's try, that's the end of the video. Sod off. I don't think that's going to work. That might be a bit too aggressive.